This is episode two of Make Your Wedding a Highlight. My name is DJ Josh from Highlight Weddings and Events, and my guest today is Holly Ferris, owner of LaFleur Photography. If you're getting ready to, or already in the process of planning your wedding, you've come to the right place. DJ Josh, owner of Highlight Weddings and Events, interviews other local 30A wedding pros to offer insight about how to make your wedding a highlight. I have Holly Ferris from LaFleur Photography. Hello. She is has been gracious enough to join me today. And let's start by just talking about yourself. All right. I am a local here on the Emerald Coast. I have owned my business for 17 years this year, starting out with wedding photography. And I do um, all other types of photography, but weddings are definitely up there along with families. I have a daughter who's almost 10 and I stay busy pretty much doing photography all the time. Awesome. So how did you get into photography and then weddings? Like how is your trajectory to where you are now? Well, it actually happened by chance. Um, My mom's friend owned a wedding event planning company and knew that I like to take pictures. This was back when we only had film. And she she knew that I took pictures for families here and there. Um, And she just asked my mom, do you think she'd want to tag along to a wedding this weekend? And my mom asked me and I said, of course. And it was pretty much history from there. I did a wedding with somebody that weekend and then they started giving me weddings after that and at that time I would actually take the photos and at the end of the wedding I would hand the bride and groom all the rolls of film and I never saw one image now they would report back and tell you know the company hey these are great that's how I knew they were good but I really had nothing (laughs) I had no portfolio or anything so at that point I had to start branching off on my own to get a portfolio but Yeah, it was crazy times. I don't think anybody that does photography now could imagine just handing over the images and never seeing one of them. That's so that's crazy to me because it's it's almost like for me, it would almost be like DJing, but not being able to hear hear or see the reality. I'd be like DJing in a little box where I can't see anybody. Right. And, you know, the viewfinder, of course, is not digital back then. Mm -hmm. It's just a regular viewfinder. So. I always, you know, kind of hoped I did well, (laughs) just went for it. Um, How would you describe your style? Because I know different photographers have different styles and they do focus on some is more like a hushed tones, some like really make it bright. Um, How would you describe your style? I try to edit super natural, natural, not supernatural, naturally, (laughs) very natural colors. I'm not personally a huge fan of changing colors, of muting tones, desaturating colors. I don't like matte finishes. That's just my own personal preference on pictures. So I shoot how I like to see pictures myself. Everything's natural. I'm not really big on presets. I, you know, doing actions in Photoshop isn't my thing. So as natural as possible, I like to pull the contrast up, usually make colors a little more vibrant than they are straight out of the camera. But as far as changing the image, I feel like if you're going to shoot something, and this has a lot to do with my film photography background, where I couldn't change anything, I don't do that now because I learned on analog where you couldn't change anything. And that's just how I am now. I don't want to change a lot of things. So I do have the tools to, you know, If I need to get something out of the background, which is always people on the beach off the background, (laughs) you know, I have the ability to do that now, but I'm not going to make you look how you don't look in person. I want it to be very natural. I like the fact that you brought up uh, beach weddings specifically, because depending on where you have them on the Emerald Coast, you cannot control who is going to be there. Oh, definitely. Especially if it's like a public beach, like you're, you're kind of at the mercy of whoever decides to hang out or stay. I have seen it all. I had a wedding a couple years ago and a family set up directly behind. Not only did they set up behind them, the dad was in a Speedo and they had two circle rainbow colored umbrellas and I could not get them out of the photos. Mm -hmm. I, I ended up just centering my bride and groom on the rainbow colored umbrella behind them because I could not get it out of the picture. I knew I was not going to be able to Photoshop it out. It was just Mm. 
it was too everywhere. <laughs> but I did get the dad in the Speedo out. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, uh, removing people from the background is, I have to do that with every single wedding, every single family shoot on the beach, because unfortunately, there's no such thing as a private beach. But at the same time, I guess that's good because we have a lot of people coming to visit and it is our livelihood. So Right. The, the only way you can get people out of your shot is if you have the wedding at, at like a private venue like the Hilton Sandestin or other places where they have security and they people will be like, hey, you guys need to move and they yeah. will, the guests will But even will then, oblige. you know, everyone's excited to see a wedding mm. and it's not uncommon to see people kind of sunbathing at the at the edge of where they can be watching and it's really nice that they're doing that, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, could you move? <laughs> but, you know, when I'm taking pictures, all I can do is kind of wave my hand one way or the other if they're behind the bride and groom. But other than that, we're just going to take it out <laughs> in post and right. not worry about it. How would you describe your ideal client? My ideal client? I don't know. It's not, um, I guess the ideal client would be someone who is not stressed out, which is hard to tell a bride, don't stress out. But I feel like as my job as a photographer is to give them a peace of mind and let them know that I've been in the business for a long time. I know kind of all the ins and outs and I've pretty much seen it all at this point. So ideally, I like to de-stress if I can. But if they come to me already de-stressed, the less stressed client, the most ideal they would be. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that never really happens. <laughs> Weddings are stressful for everybody. They are stressful, but I think if they are in a position where they trust the professional to do what they're supposed yes. to do. See, and that is a big thing I think that photographers struggle with because I want a bride and the groom to come to me knowing what they want. If they look at my work and they move forward with booking me, I'm going to assume that they booked me based on my portfolio. They know how I edit. They know what my style looks like. So the ideal client is someone who is knowing what they're getting into with their vendors, I guess, because I have had clients ask to, hey, can you edit all of these warm? Hey, can you go light and bright? Hey, can you do a matte? And my answer is always no, that's not how I edit. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't change up my style because you could book someone based on that style, you know? Right. So the ideal client for sure would be someone who knows what they want in their vendors when they approach them. Mm-hmm. And for you, it's somebody who likes your style already. Right. And that's why it's important for me to have a really large portfolio on my website, because I want you to see the wedding that's at a garden, the wedding that's at a beach, the wedding that's at a church, so that you can see my style. It's going to be the same and consistent along all mm -hmm. of those kind of venues. But so you can see the look of each of those venues, too, because a lot of times when brides do come to me, they don't always have their venue picked out. It's kind of still, they're trying to hear from, you know, a farm and then they still are like, well, I kind of want to go to the beach. You know, our parents want the church. So definitely having a portfolio and like having people look at that and knowing what they want is super important. For clients to be able to make their photos the best they could possibly do, what are some things that they can do themselves to set you up for success? I don't want to put so much on the client necessarily. It is nice when they know what they want, but I think having a general idea of posing that you like, or if there is something that you don't favor about yourself, like for me, I really don't like my profile. So I am going to, if I was the bride, I'm going to make sure that it's flattering for me to look at myself. So I think if you know what you like about yourself and you know your physical looks, if you go ahead and let your photographer know if you have any concerns, like, you know, I don't like my profile. Try not to get too much of my profile. Let them know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Because the worst feeling in the world is when a bride doesn't necessarily like how they look in their photos and you think they look completely amazing. But we are all our biggest critics. So, yeah, coming and like knowing what makes you happy and what you like to see in yourself in photos is really huge for me. And I do ask those questions like, is there anything I need to avoid, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's good that you include that in the planning process. So it's not like you just kind of essentially wing it. Right. We're not going to go in willy nilly. <laughs> right. We're going to know what you like. So let's talk about why film. What what differentiates it from digital and why should a couple consider doing both? So I just started shooting film again. I quit shooting it probably in 2012 when I did go digital, kind of like the rest of the world, but I found a newfound love for it recently, uh, mainly in medium format. 
I think that it's more authentic for one and you only have a certain number of shots per roll. So you're shooting with a lot more intention. So the shots to me are a little more special on film than they are for digital. I think it's a fun thing too. You know, it's the year 2020 and you just got some film work done. I think that's a fun thing. You know, you're bringing it back. I'm very nostalgic. I love everything vintage. (laughs) So for me, it's um, just something I enjoy. So I like to offer it and it gives it another look. You have all that beautiful fine grain that's in film that you cannot, you can try, but you cannot duplicate that in digital. You just Mm -hmm. can't get the same look no matter how hard you try. So it's just something fun. And I think film is making a comeback with a lot of the younger crowd and a lot of them want film. They want to have that film experience because a lot of people that I tend to forget are born after the digital age. (laughs) So the ones that are getting into film now that are in their mid to early 20s, they never even owned a film camera. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and then I started with a film camera. So I think it's definitely a trend right now to shoot film. So it's actually helping bring it back and resurrect it from the dead. I think the hashtag on Instagram is film is not dead. And I think it's just a fun thing to offer your clients. Mm -hmm. When you said medium format, what do you mean? So there's 35 millimeter, which is the standard roll of film in the little canister. Mm -hmm. And then there's medium format. And it's actually on a roll with a paper backing. And it's basically the size of the negative is bigger. So it can be a six by six, six by seven. Then you have large format, which is going to be, I guess, to describe it, the cameras with the bellows and they had the sheet over the back Mm, of them. And, you know, it's on a big tripod. So I like medium format because it's kind of in between both and the negatives are very detailed. It's more than you can get on a digital camera. Like the details are just insane. Mm. It's it captures a lot more. <laughs> so um, I just enjoy it personally myself, the, the look of the films and also the camera I have is a medium format camera. So how many cameras do you have? I've been asked this before. I shoot with two medium formats and one digital are like my main three camera bodies. Mm-hmm. But I own probably <laughs> upwards of 20 or 30 cameras. Some are on display. Some still work. I collect them. Mm-hmm. I have problems. <laughs> I have some of them under my bed because I don't have anywhere to display them. So, What's your favorite camera? I guess my current favorite camera would be my Pentax 6x7, which is the medium format that I'm currently shooting with because they actually use my favorite brand of lens. And it's a lens that I can adapt to my digital camera. Oh, cool. So I can, you know, kind of merges the old with the new for me. What's your favorite part of a wedding? And this doesn't have to necessarily be like photography, just in general, or you can do both. Witnessing is definitely the vows. I tear up (laughs) almost every wedding, especially if they're written by the bride and groom, Mm. because I'm just like behind the camera, I'm shedding a tear. So that's probably my favorite part to witness, because you really like see a couple's love come out. And then my favorite thing to photograph, I really like when I do the portraits of the bride and groom after the ceremony. That's traditionally when I shoot their portraits. That's the most fun for me because we finally, we've gotten ready. They've done the ceremony. They can see each other. And now we're at the point where, okay, we can take a picture together. So before all of that, I'm kind of like all over the place, scrambling and getting pictures of him getting ready, her getting ready. You know, then the ceremony, nobody's like, you know, they're not taking pictures together yet. So definitely when I can do their portraits would be the most fun, like shooting time and witnessing would be the vows. Okay. Yeah. And there's that. It's almost like. It, the the ceremony has passed so there's like that that calm and like you can breathe yes everyone now. can breathe now and now we can go party at the reception and i guess the most fun thing to see also as far as guests go is everybody getting down at a reception yeah. everybody's finally letting loose they're having fun you can see it on all their faces and you know if they have a good dj they're having even more fun mm-hmm. so is if your wedding is laid back after all the scary parts of before the ceremony, you're going to have a lot more fun. <laughs> so now let's talk about Holly, the person. Oh, gosh. What is the best compliment someone has ever given you? The best compliment? I don't know. I'm really bad at taking compliments. So there's that. I get told I have nice teeth <laughs> all the time and I have really blue eyes. But um, I guess physical compliments, those who I get the most. And then I get told by clients that I'm patient a lot with their kids. Mm. So 
I guess that I'm really bad at taking compliments. I don't know what to do. Do I just stand mm. there? Do I say, do I say thank you and say you too? I don't know. I'm the <laughs> awkward person that says, thank you for the teeth compliment. I like yours as well. You know? <laughs> okay. What did you want to be when you grew up? A photographer. Oh, you did? That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I actually have an essay I wrote about becoming a photographer in fifth grade I cannot find it, but my mom keeps everything. <laughs> and she just found this paper I wrote in high school. And it was like a mock business write up, I guess, about my business. And it was called mm. Hollywood Shots. And oh. it was all about my photography. So that was when I was a senior. So that was actually 20 years ago mm. that I wrote that. And, but I do remember writing the one in fifth grade, hoping that my mom maybe has it somewhere. I've got to dig through all the stuff she's hoarded of mine. <laughs> What is a talent that people would be surprised that you have? I don't know. This is a hard one. Okay, so I'm in a group chat with my friends, and they were all blown away by how good at the Facebook basketball game I was. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that's necessarily a talent, but your girl can ball, okay? <laughs> What's your highest score? Um. Okay, so the one that we're doing, it takes a lot to get a high score, and my high score is 32. Okay. So, but if you miss one, you have to start at zero again. I think the person under me has 28. So I'm trying to like keep myself up there. Right. <laughs> okay. If that counts as a talent. Since we both work on the weekends, typically, that's when most of our bookings are. What is your favorite way to spend an off day on the weekend? I don't really enjoy going to the beach. So definitely not that because I'm there all the time for work. I, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy. But my favorite way to relax and stuff and not have, you know, obligations is to go out and shoot film, which is so crazy because I'm a photographer, but my relaxing hobby is photography just in another format. So I do like to do that. I try I try to shoot with like friends and stuff and get some more things on my film portfolio side. But I enjoy going to shoot or driving to Pensacola and doing some street shooting and just going solo, mm -hmm. just quiet time to myself going to the camera store out there, looking around. And of course, everybody likes to just chill at the house and watch TV. Sometimes that, I guess. Yeah, I can relate to that because as a DJ, any event that I do, I know I have to kind of stay in a certain lane or whatever. And I would imagine it's the same for doing photo yes. shoots for, for clients. Like, yes. you know that you have these specific shots that you need to get. And for me, just kind of recording random sets and just letting my taste dictate where I yeah. go as far as what what songs I play. See, and that um, I was actually talking to someone about that recently. I think that it's so important if you are in a job that's creative in any aspect, any field you're in that's a creative field, in order to keep your creativity alive, you need to find a way to be creative for yourself in that field. So for me, I love taking pictures of my family. So they come back and see me each year. I love my weddings, you know, everything like that. But for me, loading a roll of film into a camera and doing some street photography is my way to have a creative outlet in the field that I'm in because I will get burnt out. Mm. It does get tiring taking photos of families every day on the beach. Not that I'm not blessed. I enjoy it immensely, but I need to go out and shoots for myself sometimes. So when I do have time off, that's that's what I do. And I actually, I just published my first book by doing that. And it was my own way to be creative. I had to go out, I had to take these pictures and I had to have my own creative outlet. And my, my subjects were, it was nighttime street photography. Hmm. There wasn't a person in the pictures. So it was nice to have, it's nice to have like my own creative outlet within my field so that I don't feel like day in and day out I'm doing the same thing. Because I think in any job you're in, whether or not it's creative, you get in that slump. I may not have a nine to five, but the person who does have the nine to five, I relate to them as in, we're doing the same thing every day, you know, kind of mm -hmm. get up and do the same thing. So what's the name of your book? It's called Night Lights. All right. How can they find you on social media, Internet, etc.? So my business is La Fleur Photography, L-A-F-L-E-U-R Photography. That is how it's on Facebook. My website is actually the snaplife.com. That's my brand. And within that website, you'll find links to everywhere that I'm listed. 
but Instagram is also LaFleur Photography, and then it's the Snap Life. Um, I have both of those. The Snap Life one is more got my film work, and the LaFleur, of course, has my business stuff. But the snaplife.com, you can find me on everything there. <laughs> I have it all linked, so that's probably the most simple answer. Well, thanks for stopping by and Thank you for with having me, me. This was fun. Yeah, this is like really my cool. second podcast, so this is cool. I like it. <laughs> Thanks for sharing with potential clients how they can make their photos a highlight. And for all you listeners out there, thanks for listening. There will be more to come. Thanks for stopping by and checking out the podcast. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and leave a review. It'll help other couples just like you find it. For more resources, including our helpful blog, check highlightweddingsandevents.com. Highlightweddingsandevents.com. And make your wedding a highlight.